Alright guys, in this video I'm going to break down why a bunch of stats in EverQuest are effectively useless. There are certain stats that you should stop stressing over, and after this revelation, you'll see just how meaningless a bunch of items in EverQuest really are. Now this will not be a masterclass on stats, and most of the parses that I use for this analysis are between 1 and 3 hours in length. Long enough to directionally understand what the hell stats are doing for your character, but we're not going to be talking about specific breakpoints and the nitty gritty of AC and whatnot. Also, I'm only going to be talking about stats in relation to Trilogy Era EverQuest, and only stats that impact, or supposedly impact, your offensive power or defensive power. So that's strength, stamina, agility, and dex. We're not going to talk about heroic stats, secondary effects, or resistances. Alright, first up, the king of useless stats is agility. Cool tips in game tell you that agility should influence your AC and help you avoid incoming damage, impacting how often NPCs will miss you. All right, cool. So I tested it. So for this test, I let a level 22 need light beat on a level 50 monk with his back turned. His base agility was 110. At that level, the need light landed a hit on him 35% of the time. And then after buffing his agility to 255 without directly adding any AC through gear or buffs, you can see that both the mitigation and avoidance side of the AC stat increased, which is what we expect. Now we let the need light beat on us again with 255 agility, and this time the need light hit us 32% of the time. So we added 145 points of agility and reduced the mob's chance to hit by three points. Not great. We can simplify this by saying for every 50 agility that you gain, a monster's chance to hit you will decrease by 1%. So for example, from 35 to 34%. Now think about how difficult it would be to obtain just 50 agility on gear during Classic Era EverQuest. It's quite difficult. So if you equip an item here or there with a couple of agility points on it, your character is effectively gaining nothing. And if you also consider that a lot of agility items come paired with dexterity on them, it gets even worse. So now let's talk about dex. Dexterity is also a pretty useless stat in EverQuest. In game, the tooltips tell us that it increases our chance to hit, increases our damage done with ranged attacks, crit rate, and the frequency of combat effects. Wow, that sounds like a lot of shit, right? Not really. First, I focused on testing basic melee damage and accuracy using a level 50 monk. The results, as you might not expect, were identical with 95 dex and with 255 dex. The monk landed the same number of attacks, 66%, his average hit was the same, and his overall DPS was the same. Though by increasing his dex by 175 points, he gained nothing. But, 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 Mr. YouTuber sir, what about my warrior? He needs to proc to generate aggro. So he does, little Timmy but I tested this for you too. This time, I tested using a level 50 warrior wielding a single SSOY, using a shield in his offhand, and measured his procs per minute. With 89 dex, he averaged one proc per minute, and after buffing his dex to 255, his procs per minute grew to an astounding two procs per minute. Incredible stuff. So let's break this down. That means for every one point of dex, you increase your procs by 0 0.01 times per minute. Yeah, that's right. So to simplify this, it would take 80 dex to increase your procs by half of a proc per minute and 160 dex to increase your procs per minute by one. So again, think about how difficult it would be to stack that amount of dex in classic. Not easy. And so you're really just not getting much bang for your buck here. So now let's talk about crit rate. On a class like Warrior that has an innate chance to critical strike, increasing dex from 89 to 255 improved his critical strike rate from 1.45% to 3.24%. That's a change of 1.8 points. In other words, it's going to take you 100 dex to get an additional 1% chance to critical strike. So the one thing dex is really good for is range damage. Dex essentially functions as additional attack rating for ranged attacks, just like strength does for melee attacks. So let's take a look. For this test, I used a level 50 ranger with 104 base dex, and then I buffed him up to 255 dex. Now check out these gains. It's pretty impressive, actually. His average hit went up 19.4%. His crit rate went from 4.37% 
to 8.43%, almost double. And his accuracy went from 64.1% to 65.6%. So all of these offensive categories combined, his DPS increased by 33%. So let's break down these gains. This means that for every eight decks, you'll gain plus 1% average hit damage with a bow. For every 40 decks, you're gonna gain plus 1% crit rate as a ranger with a bow. And for every 100 decks, you will gain plus 1% accuracy. So we can boil all this down to say, for every five decks as a ranger, you're going to gain 1% DPS while using a bow. And honestly, these are fairly impressive numbers if you ask me. Dex is clearly the go-to stat for range damage, and honestly, it's quite a good stat in terms of the conversion ratio. The big catch here is that during the classic era, bow damage is just significantly inferior to melee damage for rangers. So increasing your range damage isn't really going to help you much, if at all. Therefore, in classic era, I'm still going to have to give dexterity a final rating of completely useless. Okay, let's move on to the final two stats, strength and stamina. For the strength test, I used a level 50 monk, only increasing strength, making sure not to add any attack rating from other sources. The monk went from 80 strength to 236 strength, a change of 156, which translated into 104 attack on the damage side of the attack rating, while the accuracy side had no change. This means plus one strength gives you plus 0.66 attack. As expected during the parse, the monk gained no additional accuracy from the additional strength. However, his average hit and thus his DPS increased by 15.5%. So breaking this down, we can assume that one strength increases melee DPS by 0.1% or 10 strength equals plus 1% DPS. Not too shabby, especially considering that if you care a whole lot, you can often cherry pick races with significantly more base strength than others. So the conclusions here are quite clear. For a melee class, strength adds 1% DPS per 10 strength, while dexterity adds nothing to a class that cannot crit or proc. Let me say that again. Dexterity adds nothing to a melee class that cannot crit or proc. Now, it's going to depend on the proc, but if you assume that you are a class that can baseline melee crit and you have a proc in the classic era, then you're looking at something like plus 0.6% DPS per 10 dex. And the only class that falls into this category is warrior, by the way. For rangers, yes, dexterity is quite strong for bow damage, but until bow damage is a thing, which is basically Lucklin, the stat is effectively useless for rangers as well. Okay, on to stamina. So stamina gains are going to vary from class to class, and it also depends on what level you are. So we're just going to generalize here that it's around 4 HP per stamina for a bunch of classes at level 50. And by the way, for what it's worth, a level 1 monk only gained 3 HP for increasing his stamina by 40 points. So the returns at lower levels are going to be quite poor, so consider it an investment in your future. But even at 50, stamina isn't really looking super great. Again, like strength, it is nice that you could just opt to pick a high starting stamina race and get a nice bonus chunk of HP for free, but realistically, even if you were able to stack, say, 50 stamina on gear, that's only around 200 extra HP, which is about a 10% increase on the base health of a level 50. Is this realistically going to increase your survivability? Not really. HP can help prevent one shots, but what we really want to do is decrease the damage that's being dealt to us, which is where AC comes in. Now, I promise not to do a deep dive on AC in this video, so for simplicity's sake, let's just use the age-old formula as an approximation and say that 1 AC equals 10 HP in effective health. That would therefore translate into 1 stamina equals 0.4 AC. Or maybe a better way to think about it would be that to replace an item with 4 AC, your new item would have to offer at least 10 stamina. I think it's pretty clear here that obtaining an item with 4 AC is significantly easier than obtaining one with 10 stamina. Overall, I won't say that stamina is worthless, but it's pretty mediocre. As a survivability stat, I would say that it's definitely better than agility, but significantly worse than AC. If you made it this far, congratulations, you're a fucking nerd like me. Here's the TLDR. Melee DPS, you want to stack strength, strength, and more strength. 10 strength equals 1% DPS. For warriors, I would still prefer strength, and then secondarily, I would go after dex as an offensive stat to increase your crit and proc rates. Rangers, I would ignore dex until Lucklin, unless you're an AFK Bobot and Bellius outranging Dragon AEs, then go, go for it, stack dex. Defensively, 
AC is king, but keep in mind that the agility to AC conversion rate is horrific. I would go for AC over HP over stamina over agility. So hopefully this makes you look a little differently at items during Trilogy Era EverQuest, and maybe you won't be quite so concerned with equipping a bunch of the subpar items out there. All right, that's all I got for this video, so I'll see you in the next one.